energy drink they won't let you do that. yeah a lot of people right. try to put energy drink in the yes. booze. you can't do that either what's go ahead sorry. i was gonna say i have a question because a lot of times at least here in new york i don't know if it's just contained to the city or if it's a worldwide phenomenon if i ask for a red bull at a bar or a red bull vodka yeah a lot of times the bartenders they kind of turn up their nose They're like we don't serve red bull here Wow. I don't know why that is. And then a lot yeah. of times they'll be like, we actually have Monster. But they, it's like uh, they're looking down at people ordering Red Bulls now. Yeah. I don't understand that. I don't you know, it's it. interesting, too. Red Bull has, like, predatory contracts. Really? So w when you sign a deal as a bar with Red Bull, uh -huh. they give you a few dollars. They'll give you, like, a DJ stand or some tables. You've seen a Red Bull yeah, yeah. the tables and stuff. But they, in the contract, it says you are not allowed to do business with any other energy drink. Damn. Mm. That's probably so, why they don't like them. That's probably why. Because they're really owner. predatory. Okay, yeah. so here's an idea. What if we start an energy drink? drink called no energy and it's just it just says it's no energy so then it's not an energy drink but it is and we can name that one lazy fuck too yeah it, perfect we're on a and then we there. scoop in when everyone's like hey you got a red bull deal you can't get out of we'll come buy some no energy yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's how red bulls was successful though is that approach that makes you know, sense. they buy you in so to speak and yeah. then lock you in yeah Very yeah okay yeah. well we're gonna take down uh the energy drink world i, I think, think we, we should can find a way yeah we can definitely that new one that bang which all the instagram models are doing uh-huh that's uh, all I you got, gotta do i like the pft i think yeah that's the pft cool. is a great drink good. that's a good name for a drink i think yeah. i i don't know if i'm in love necessarily with the the four loco now that i think about it because they changed the formula of it so it would have to be mad dog and let's just say uh, Old English. Mm. Mad Dog and Old English. A little Old, old English. English. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, so here's the deal. We'll give somebody something to look forward to. So we're going to create that drink together, you and I, when you're on Bar Rescue. Okay, okay. and we'll teach, uh, as a mixologist, I will teach the bartenders how to make <laughs> that, it. I yes. think that's terrific. Yeah, yes. you, so, so, you always so, shake up here, right? Of course, and you got a smile button. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually a good segue to our Mount Rushmore because I bet you people would go to a bar just to have the PFT. Probably. Just to get just to get like I would. hooked up on the PFT. So we're gonna do a Mount Rushmore of bar attractions. Things that a bar has that makes you want to go to that bar. Things that you're like, I'm gonna go to this bar and I know I'm gonna have a good time because of this. Could be a menu item, could be a feature in the bar, could be anything. You wanna start? Sure. All right, so we're gonna do a, a snake draft. So it's gonna go you, me, the PFT, then PFT's gonna go twice and come back around. Snake draft. Do you know a snake draft? I know a snake draft. Okay, because a lot of people get confused. And when I say a lot of people, it's pretty much just us. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's a lightning round. Yeah, one mm -hmm. time we got really high and got caught in the snake. Gotcha. We still have not caught. Yeah, there. we couldn't figure out where we were. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. So, it was actually in Vegas. So were you stuck for hours? We yes. were stuck for a very long time <laughs> in the snake. We could not remember who started guys, and who stopped You it. legalized weed out there, and that presented all sorts of problems. It was, yeah. The least oh, of which is not yes. being able to do a yes. snake draft. A little bit of a fog. Has that, yeah. by the way, uh, before you do the first pick, has legal legalization of weed done anything to the bar industry? You know, it does impact the bar industry. You know, you talk about sitting on a couch. Right. I mean, typically you don't smoke weed and then go out. Correct. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, it tends to keep you home. Yeah. So, you know, I think it has created some erosion in the bar business for okay. sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then what about, but gambling is the, uh, like, you know, most states like Illinois just did gambling and weed in the same weekend. I would imagine gambling would raise the bar business. I would think, especially if we can bring it into the bar. Into bars. the bar. Now, what's oh, great about man. Las Vegas is you have all the gaming apps. Right. So you can sit in a bar and you can bet on the apps yep. in real time, right. which is very cool. People will stay longer. They'll stay through the fourth quarter, make sure that over-under hits. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So you go first. Easy. Sports on video. Sports on video. Mm -hmm. A sports bar. A sports bar. I mean. But you I know what's interesting about a sports bar? Sports will only fill a bar about 70 days a year. Really? And a lot of people think, oh, but a sports bar, they come every night. That's not true. They don't come for every baseball game. Right. right? Only postseason. They don't come for every NBA game. It'll be postseason. Mm -hmm. Even big hockey cities, they don't come for all 80-some-odd hockey games. Yep. So when you really put together the playoffs, you know, the various things that only about 70, 80 days tops. And it is, you are right that, like, you, if you're going to watch a big game, there are only a few bars that you can think of where you're like, you know the game's going to be on, you know the sound's going to be on, and you know you're going to be able to watch the TV. Yep. Because because there's a lot of places where it's like, yeah, oh, they might have two TVs. If you're in Brooklyn, you have zero TVs. Mm -hmm. But like a good bar where you know you can watch the game is always, yeah. always high on the list. You know what's interesting to me? I never saw this. He's talking about sports and bars. You know, with Sunday Ticket, which you guys know I created. Yeah, no, with, no just with, a with flex. No, no, no big deal. With NFL Sunday Ticket, you know, different bars have different teams. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So the Dallas game could be at one place, whereas the Green Bay game could be at another place. I always wondered why somebody or DirecTV or somebody didn't do an app where if you're a 
a Dallas fan, I can put it in and find out which bar is showing the Dallas game. Yeah. yeah. So I could go to that bar. Yeah. Nothing like that exists. So yeah. Maybe I should mm -hmm. create it. They well, do do. Wouldn't you do it if you were in a city and you wanted to yes. go see a particular game? Yeah. Because what happens is I, I just Google like Redskins bars. And then a bunch of things pop up that they don't show the Redskins anymore because they're a shitty team and probably yep. always will be. <laughs> but I know that there are at least one or two bars that are showing them, but it's not the classic Redskins ones. And then I'm just stuck with my thumb up my ass. Although right. I will say when you go to a sports bar on a Sunday morning and my favorite thing that they do is they'll put a piece of paper under every TV for which game's about to yeah. play. Mm -hmm. When you walk into an empty sports bar on a Sunday morning and you're like, I can set myself up anywhere, that's the best feeling in the world. Great, Absolutely. That's the best feeling in the world. All right, I'm going to go with a good shuffleboard table. Yes. Ooh. I love playing shuffleboard. It is so much fun and a good one. I'm not talking about the cheap shuffleboard table. I'm talking a real one. Got to get the right amount of sand. Got to have, you know, can't be too expensive. A good shuffleboard table will get me at a bar and get me to stay for a long time. You know, it's interesting you say that because shuffleboard is not as popular as it should be. I know. And when I put them into bars, they do really well. Yeah. And, but you can do couples. You can do double elimination. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. Right. So I think that's a great call. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, with, with the positioning of a shuffleboard table, is it better to have them against the wall or out in the open? Against the wall. Yeah. Because when you put it out in the open, it creates de too much dead space around it. Mm -hmm. See, and up against the wall, it works fine. I like a little bit more space off the wall. You can't go right up against the wall because no, if you, you go right up against inches. the wall, so you have elbow room. Yeah, you have to then switch yeah. with your partner back and forth. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And you know what really gets me is when people drop the, the weights the pucks, and you dent yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, so you really got to maintain it yes. properly. It's like a pool table. You yeah. got to do it right. Yes. All right. Uh, for my first one, I'm going to keep it very, very simple. A popcorn machine. Yeah, I had that mm -hmm. written down. I love a nice mm -hmm. like a nice dive bar with a popcorn machine. Yep. The smell, too. N nothing better. Is yeah. It really it sets the vibe. Yeah. Salty as hell, right? Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> and that makes you do the better. Of course. Yes. Of course. Yeah. I knew this is how they get you. I'm so dumb. I just like the popcorn. No, but you're right. I had that written down. That was my like okay. third thing I wrote well, down. I'm probably going to take one of yours, too, Big Cat, because I know that you agree with this one. By the way, PFT. Just, uh, just you're working off your phone. Yes. He's working off a list. I like a little ink under my table. I, no, I just I, I, I'm very impressed by the preparation. We that literally the did two this. Of you put in. Forty seconds before. <laughs> yeah, you're going raw dog. You just right from it. your brain. Yeah, yeah. but you also have a lifetime worth of information of bar science stored up I there. Do. Correct. I so do. yeah, you're at a decided. Oh, well, this is unfiltered John Taffer brain. Yes. <laughs> Um, like my, I've ever been filtered here before. You're literally <laughs> putting your your mouth up to the tap uh -huh. That's when, when, yep. when you're on this show. Uh, my next one is turtle racing. Ah, It's a specific one, yep. but there's a bar that I used to go to called Little Woodrow's in Austin, and it was so much fun because on Thursday nights, they would have turtle racing at like yep. 6 o'clock. They'd get all these tiny little turtles that have numbers painted mm -hmm. on them. They put them in the middle of a big circle, and then everybody bets on the turtles, yep. which one's going to make it out of the circle yep. first. And the entire bar stops what they're doing, and they gather around watching this. And just uh, like 50, 60 people screaming their lungs out at baby little turtles. turtles. Yep. So fun. That's how I got addicted to gambling. Mm -hmm. I was 12 turtles. years old. I went to a turtle race in Key West, Florida. My parents brought me, and I won a $100 bill. And from that point on, I was addicted that to gambling. That was it. Yeah. It's funny. When I was running Barney's Beanery in Los Angeles, California, I was a bartender many years ago. And Lone Star came to California, and they asked me to do a TV commercial. And the TV commercial was Armadillo Races. So they took us to the set. They had all the lanes with Armadillo Races. And we let the Armadillos go, and they didn't go anywhere. So the producers come up to me and said, listen to me. you got to squeeze its balls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So you put your hand on top of the armadillo, and there's like six of us, and you stick your hand underneath it, and you got to squeeze the little guy's balls so he takes off, which is not something you really want to do right. as a guy. You, right. know, you can relate to So you put your hand on top of him, you squeeze his little nuts, and then he pisses in your hand and takes off. There you go. And I lost, of course. But it always bothered me to this day that I squeezed this little guy's balls. And you yeah, can yeah that's fucked that up. Went, Absolutely. You want to apologize so to the least, armadillo? I'll apologize to him right now. Okay, so I've felt bad about it all these years. You got uh, you got finger fucked by John Tapper. We apologize, okay? <laughs> but you pissed on his hands. So yeah, that's true. You got revenge. the last lap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you? Uh, oh, and then afterwards, you have to raise your hands as if you won, even though you didn't. <laughs> so, as I raise my hand, the piss is running down my arm. Armadillo. I can't imagine oh, that smells man. good. No, that's no. Probably, like, no, no. Thinking no. through the animal kingdom, armadillo piss has got to be up there as, yeah. as part of the smell. Yeah. But it has bothered me all these years. Yeah, that I did that. That's. I'm happy you got that off your <laughs> chest. I do. I feel much better now. Yeah. Thank you guys.